In this lecture, we're going to see how the procure to pay cycle works in SAP S4 HANA. So first I'll show you theoretically, then we'll see how it works in the system. So the procure to pay process step starts with creating a purchase requisition. So a requisition is created in the system and this can be done by any staff member of the company and in some businesses it can be done by the only purchasing department. Step number two is to approve this purchase requisition which is done by the team leader of the, of the requisitioner or the manager of the line. Next step is to convert this purchase requisition into a purchase order. This is done automatically by the system but it also can be done manually. Next is post goods receipt for the purchase order. So when the goods will arrive to the company, this is done by the requisitioner or someone from the department of the requisitioner. Step number five, five is the invoice verification. This is again done by the accounts payable department. And last step is the post payment where we will pay the vendor for the amount of the purchase order. This is also done by the accounts payable department. Now we'll see practically how it is done in the S4 system. This is our S4 system and I will create another video about how to navigate into the system. But for now, I'll just show you how the purchase rec and all the six steps are done in the system. So first of all, we need to create a purchase requisition. Uh, these are different applications. I need to search for an application called manage purchase requisition. So I will on the top bar search bar, I will search for manage purchase requisition this is the one and this is the application that can be used for creating and also displaying or changing so if I click on go it will show me all the purchase requisition in the system you can also filter by different options here we'll talk about it in the different video and here I can select any purchase equation. I can click on copy, but for now I will just create from the scratch. I'll click on the create icon. And this is my requisition creation screen. So here, first of all, you need to make sure you click on the automatic source determination. That means if the product is set up already set up with the pricing with a specific vendor, it will pick up that vendor and the price. Here you can enter some text. For example, I can say this is a test purchase rec. Then I will scroll down. Here you can see the item screen. Here you click on the create icon and either you can select material service or cross catalog, etc. But for now, we'll keep it simple. I will select material. It will then open up this screen where you can enter different details. First of all, I will enter my material code, which is I already created a material. So I will type in hard disk. I created a code called hard disk 500. This is the one I can select that. And you can see it will copy the default plant and description, etc. Only thing you need to keep an eye is to make sure you enter the details in all the red fields which are the mandatory fields for example here you can see the quantity field is red that means it's asking for quantity so i will say four is the quantity we need press enter there's no other mandatory field so we can skip that and i can click on apply it will then go back to the previous screen so here you can see there's one line item created here i can also on the front screen i can change the uh, the quantity, uh, valuation price, etc. And if you want to add one more item, you can you need to click on create again. It will enter the second item. But for now, we'll just keep it simple. Just we have only one item here. Optionally, if I scroll down, you can also attach uh, a file. For example, we 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 can attach a drawing. For example, if there's a like a uh, maintenance product, etc. I can click on upload and I can pick up the file. So once you are done, you can then click on create icon at the bottom. Other thing you can notice is if I go, if you want to go back to this um, item, you can click on this 
arrow again and here if I scroll down you can also see who is the vendor by default if there's a vendor setup it will pick up the vendor you can see the vendor is a1 supplier so I'll click on apply again and it will go back to the previous screen then I can click on create it will then save the purchase requisition so on the top you can see this is a purchase requisition created I can copy this number so step number one is done now step number two is to create a purchase order now purchase order as I said usually is done automatically but after the approval now another important important thing you need to see here is if I click on the approval details here because in this system there is no approval setup that is why there's nothing here but in the real-time environment um, it will go by the approval and in the other video I'll show you how to set up the approval process but for now there is no approval here so we can skip this step and we can move to the next step which is to create a purchase order to create a purchase order uh, we need to do it manually so there is application called automatic purchase order from requisition automatic creation of purchase order from requisition this is the one I can select this it will open a different screen different tab and basically it's showing you the GUI transaction here so here you can see there are different filters we'll talk about all these filters later on but for now here I can enter my purchase requisition number this is the field for purchase requisition I already copied the number I can paste it here just like that and also if you want to just test it first then what you can do you can tick on this test run and then execute here and you can see the green light that means it's all good to convert I'll go back I will untick test run and I can click on execute you can see it created this purchase order four five double zero double zero three zero six seven now step number three is completed now step number four is to post the goods receipt before that if you want to display this purchase order you can search for an app called manage purchase order here you can see different filters here we'll talk about this filter later on but for now if I search click on go it will search for all the purchase order that are set up in the system but what I need is I need the one for the supplier that I created before so I can click on this search option and here I can search for my supplier which is A1 supplier I can click on go and this is the number the first one and I can click on OK and then click on go so this is the one on the top you can see is the one that we just created so to create a goods receipt out of this there are two ways to do it you can do it from this screen or you can search for the application called post goods receipt for the purchase order <clears throat> for now I'll just click on this and click on the standard PO and you will see that option here to create the post goods receipt so it will open that app from this screen so I'll click on it it will automatically paste that number here for the purchase order <coughs> so here you can see um, it's showing me that there are four quantity which is okay there's a red field here which is storage location I need to select the storage location can select it and then once you are done then you can click on post so once you post it it created this material document number I can click on this material document number if you want to display this and the next step from here is 
create the supplier invoice. So from here, I will search for application called create supplier invoice. And this is the one create supplier invoice advanced. If I select that, it will open another tab. It will show you this GUI screen. So here you need to select the company code first. So my company code is 001A. And I can click on continue. Then you need to enter the invoicing date. I'll use today's date. And here you need to enter the purchase order number. So here I can paste my purchase order number. But in real time environment, what happens is the accounts payable department will receive a invoice. It can be a PDF invoice. It can be a printed invoice and they will see all the details on the invoice. For example, it will have the purchase order number, the quantity, the material code, etc., and the price. So they will match everything on with this screen. So for now, I'll just paste my purchase order number and press enter. So they will match with this screen what is the price, the quantity, etc., the product code and description, etc. And once it's all matching, then they will process this invoice verification. So here you can see we had four quantity and the amount is 180 euros. So I will here, next step is we need to maintain here the amount 180 manually and then press enter. When you press enter, you will see a green light here. That means everything is okay. Then you click on the post. There's a warning here, press enter. And then you can see at the bottom, there's a message called document number this is posted. So this is step number five. And now the last step is which is um, payment to the vendor. So for that there's application called manage supplier line item. If I open this app. Here you need to search for the supplier, for example. So I'll, I'll click on this search box and I'll search by name. I'll, so I remember the name is A1 supplier and then you click on go. And this is my supplier code. I can click OK. And then you click on go it will then show you all the pending line items. So here you can see there are four pending line items. And the one at the top, this is one that we just created, you can see the amount is 180 euros. So the last step is to pay the vendor for this purchase order. And they will select this line item and click on enter single payment. And because this system is not properly set up from the accounting side, there's an error here. But this will then in real time process the the line item and will pay for the when for this uh, purchase order and once it's paid that line will disappear from here from this screen so this will end the process to pay cycle i hope you learned this so we'll talk more about this in the next videos in more details so thank you very much to watch this